Hi, my name is Shay and thanks for clicking on this video. The reason why you clicked on this video is because you saw the title of how to go from being a teacher and entering into a whole new career field. What I have formulated in this video is two parts. First, the skills that you've learned as a pre-service and a professional teacher and how to utilize them in a resume so that you can sell yourself into a profession that isn't teaching. I'm gonna have a whole list, like 15 skills that are usable across any career field, give you examples for what you can write on your new resume. And then I will also part two, show you my resume with those explicit examples in the career field that I entered this past year. So anyway, let's just get into it. So first, before we get into all 15 of these skills that you can use across the board for any career, I want to just get your mind thinking about specific examples that you have personally done that are tied to these skills. The first skill that I'm going to say is leadership. My word, we have led students, we have led parents, we have led coworkers, teams, admin, many different people and individuals in our teaching field. So I want you to think about a time when you have done that and what was the goal and how did you do it? That's how in an interview, when you have these blanket statements on your resume and they ask you to further explain rather than just rereading your resume, they wanna hear story time. They wanna hear your actual experience, that example that's tied to it. So while you're writing out these statements of truly the skills that you have, be thinking about those examples because they'll just roll off your tongue during that interview. And now two, multitasking. You can come up with so many different examples of how teachers multitask. The one that I formulated was consistently managed over classroom behaviors while also moving forward efficiently to proceed through the academic lessons that we had to do each and every day to stay on track. So multitasking. Three, we are exceptional at being on a team. So teamwork is another skill that you have from being in the teaching profession. You have worked with all these different groups of people, just like I stated with leadership and who you've led, students, teachers, parents, admin, yada, yada, yada. You have worked together to problem solve and brainstorm ideas. The fourth skill, we are expert communicators, whether that be notes, reminders, homework, achievements, goals, any of those things we have communicated on the daily, morning, afternoon, and the evenings, and the weekends. So communication, definitely down pat. You've got that. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I have been writing out these blanket generic statements for your resume down here at the bottom. While I've been commenting on the skills, I'm putting a clear statement that you could write and tweak in your own way onto your resume right down here. I think when we say we're teachers and we went to school for teaching, we kind of forget that that is an art and a science itself. So the process of being able to teach other people and figure out where they are in their thought processes and diagnose the misunderstanding and then even know how to use methods of different types of learning so that we can create materials and lessons and instruct people on how to get from point A to point B, the mastery, the understanding, all of the things. In a nutshell, teaching is a very complex art in science and it doesn't happen overnight. And that can be used into new careers tenfold. What number are we on? I think we might be on number seven. And this one is data analysis. We know that in the field of teaching, we're asked all the time to look over our anecdotal records and our quantitative and our qualitative data to see trends in individuals as well as collectively as a whole to find strengths in our students, in ourselves, our teaching, and also the weaknesses of where we've fallen short or where a student is having a misunderstanding. I think we're at number eight and that's enthusiasm. Even when we don't always feel like it and this is just a good skill to practice on the daily, we show up with positivity and enthusiasm for our students because not only do we know our day is going to go better if we are encouraging the students around us and the people around us and upholding the morale of the school in our classroom 
it's just so much more enjoyable. Number nine, we are fantastic with time management. We have a whole lot of expectations and a whole lot of goals in a tight schedule with lots of deadlines and we just move swiftly through them day in and day out with all the variables that we can't control. So time management, even down to the written planners or the digital planners or sitting down to backward design our curriculum, we have put a whole lot of thought into how we can manage our time, which in fact goes into the next skill that you have. Teachers are very adaptable, flexible, interchangeable skill word synonym there for you. So when those things come up in our day that are unexpected, whether that's a student behavior or in a new career, it's a customer or a computer's down or whatever it may be, we have practiced being quick on our feet, problem solving in the moment and continuing to move forward efficiently with the day's plans. This next skill set ties into what I kind of already talked about with teaching by accident, but they tie all together. Again, it's an art. These skills are very much complementary to one another. So that's critical thinking, not only on your part, but also encouraging critical thinking in others. And with the teaching skill, critical thinking strengthens that because we can pinpoint where that misunderstanding is and create a dialogue that is instructional and supportive and encouraging to somebody to be able to navigate to the mastery, that understanding of whatever that may be. So that is definitely a skill that you want to showcase. Next, you are highly reflective. We are encouraged all of the time to self-reflect. In that case, we usually are just self-reflective people, individuals in general, but we are used to getting critical feedback consistently with all those pop-ins and all those sit-down meetings and with the scales and the rubrics where we sit down and think about our professionalism and how we've managed our time and how we laid out a lesson plan and how we see that students have received those lessons we have been asked to be very reflective personally and professionally, and you are great at doing that. And kind of tying into that one, we have a high understanding of emotional intelligence. We have been trained in that. So what that means is that we've been trained in the mental, emotional, and social development of children, of people, so that we can conversate with them and de-escalate. We can also help them navigate through problems, through conflicts, through differing opinions when unwanted big behaviors occur. One skill keeps handing off to the other one and this next one is patience. We have had much practice being able to sit and listen to others, including students who don't formulate their thoughts as well as perhaps an older individual. <laughs> Questionable there. Um, but anyway, we are patient with being able to wait and hear a complete idea and thoughts. And in that way, we are also building upon their ideas positively. We're asking for clarification when we feel that we need to and encouraging a team-based decision until it's made. And the 15th one, I feel like I've kind of covered this interchangeably, but conflict resolvers, problem solvers, it is a given we have had to do that day in and day out. So we have had much practice listening, whatever that noise was, listening to others, uh, navigating through the misunderstandings, finding the common ground, thinking of solutions that work for everybody, and getting everyone on board to work together so that there is progress being made and that we can continue to move forward, whether that is personally, professionally, or academically. So now that you've heard all 15 of those skills that can be used in any career across the board that you all have mastered and and you have practiced and you have been trained in over and over again, I would like to show you my resume and how I use those, plug them in more specifically into an industry that I was going into for the first time a year ago, and that was the wedding planning industry. I know that you might not be going into the same industry, but that's okay because again, those skills that I just went over, you can tweak them and make them specific in the way that you need, in the way that your industry prioritizes skills. So 
I encourage you to look up your industry and see what the top five needed skill sets are. What seems to be like, gonna go off <laughs> the cup here. Like if you were a piece of candy in a store and you wanted to be the most popular and favorite candy, you have to have certain characteristics that get you chosen off the shelf. Like what is that in this industry you wanna go into? So now let's just go ahead and take a look at my resume so that you can see those more specific statements written on a resume. If at any point you want to stop the video and look over my resume word for word, please go ahead and do that. I will not be going over it word for word. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time, if you want to do that, you definitely can. So up here at the top, just like any other resume, you wanna put your name as well as your last name, put your email, a phone number, and if you have a LinkedIn profile, put it on up there too. The next part of the resume is something different than a teacher resume. It's called the summary. And this is where you can really condense who you are in a nutshell. This definitely took me almost more time than, well, actually probably the same amount of time to figure that out as everything else on this resume. You wanna make sure your summary highlights you. It is catching because it's the first thing they're gonna read about you. It will encourage them to continue reading and going forward through your resume. What I did was took my top skills, which is under key skills, and I thought about the skills that my new industry is going to be looking for, put those together in a highlighted narrative. Speaking of which, the next portion is key skills, and this is where I pulled a lot of those 15 skills I just covered in the past 10 minutes. Go ahead and list your education as usual. And now let's get to the juicy stuff. Under experience, instead of listing every school I was a pre-service and a professional teacher at, I have now gone back to listing every position I've held in a business. So digging deeper, first looking at Charleston County School District, you can see I have lots of highlighted words here on the screen. These highlighted words are the skills we just went over, but now attaching those personal experiences that we brainstormed. So the first thing that I wrote under my most recent job, which was being a second grade advanced studies teacher, is analyze, there's that skill word, and self-monitor trends across multiple sources of data to create action plans that will continue overall improvement. Y'all, you can definitely write that one down for yourselves too. And then, let's see, my next highlight words or solutions and concerns that should jog your memory from what we just discussed. This has to do with brainstorming incentives to increase positive student behaviors and procedural solutions to address those problems. There's communicate the reminders, the discussion notes to other teachers for positive work environment and coordinated oversaw fundraisers that shows management and leadership to raise revenue and increase accessible instructional resources. Again, I am going to just be blazing through this. You can pause it at any time to read them verbatim. Even down there, I have used my serving experience from the Low Country Fish Camp restaurant and I intertwined still those same skills. See how those skills can be used in any position, any job. Observing nonverbal communication and verbal communication that happens as a server, as a good customer representative. And then even under when I was a landlord, the real estate in Somerville, South Carolina, I was overseeing my residential units for two tenants multitasking between doing the rental fees and maintenance and administration and improvements. And then you can see then again, I have more training as a server through college. Those were those years and the words trained and team and encouraged I've highlighted because that looped back to the 15 skills. So no matter what industry you've been in, I hope this is a little bit of proof that you can rewrite those in such a way that they show flexibility across many, many industries. After experiences, I still listed professional development. I didn't list all of my professional development, but specifically the ones that I felt were tying into this new industry that I was entering. And then following that, I also put additional achievements. Those achievements also were tying into this industry, whether that was when I was an organizer and a decorator or head coach, assistant coach, that showed that I had leadership and organization and planning skills and jumping back up there to professional development. You can see I have even more words highlighted that tie into the skills that we already pre-discussed. 
And that is that. If you have any questions, if you want clarification, if you have any ideas on what video you would like for me to make next in order to help you in this transition process, even if it's just a Q&A sort of thing, whatever y'all need, I wanna to continue to help and be there because I remember that transition period being scary, um, uncomfortable, um, yeah, just scary and uncomfortable, not knowing what to ask. It was like the questions I didn't know, like I didn't know what I didn't know. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please also check out my last video from like a year ago and I'll put it up here in the screen somewhere. It is interview tips and what I was doing for a job during that transition, just to financially have income and uh, definitely a reflection from a year ago versus now. If you are still trying to decide if leaving teaching is the right thing, you just need someone to empathize and understand what you're going through. Into 2021, I put out a video on the 1st of January about quitting teaching and why I did so and the experiences that led up to the feelings I was having and also how I was feeling since I left the profession. Thank you again so much. Please consider subscribing and have a good rest of your day. Bye.